blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom and forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. to us, Lord, we pray the Spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading this morning is from 2 Samuel. The king, David, ordered Joab and Abishai and Ittai, saying, Deal gently for my sake with the young man Absalom. And all the people heard when the king gave orders to all the commanders concerning Absalom. So the army went out into the field against Israel, and the battle was fought in the forest of Ephraim. The men of Israel were defeated there by the servants of David, and the slaughter there was great on that day. 20,000 men, the battle spread over the face of the country, and the forest claimed more victims that day than the sword. Absalom happened to meet the servants of David. Absalom was riding on his mule, and the mule went under the thick branches of a great oak. His head caught fast in the oak, and he was left hanging between heaven and earth, while the mule that was under him went on. And ten young men, Joab's armor bearers, surrounded Absalom and struck him and killed him. The Cushite came, and the Cushite said, Good tidings for my lord the king, for the Lord has vindicated you this day, delivering you from the power of all who rose up against you. The king said to the Cushite, Is it well with the young man Absalom? The Cushite answered, May the enemies of my lord, the king, and all who rise up to do you harm be like that young man. The king was deeply moved and went upon to the chamber over the gate and wept. And as he went, he said, O oh, my son, Absalom, my son, my son, Absalom, would I had died instead of you, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Let us say together Psalm 130. Out of the depths have yes, I called I you. Call you Lord, Lord. 
Lord, Lord hear my voice. Let, Let your ears, ears be as well the voice, voice of my supplication. If, if you, Lord, were, were to know what it was done in this, O Lord, Lord you could not stand. stand. For so there is forgiveness with you, therefore, therefore you shall, shall be healed. I wait, I wait for the Lord, for the Lord. my soul, my soul waits, waits for him. In, in his, his word, word is my hope. My hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenty of redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Our second reading is from the book of Ephesians. Putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors. We are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing rather than, rather let them labor and work honestly with their own hands so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, and there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger, and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God, as beloved children, and live in love, as Christ loved us, and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered, answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Monkey see, monkey do. Monkey get in trouble too. Did you ever hear this expression, or were you reminded of its truth at some time or other in your youth? Perhaps even to a greater degree as you matured? One day, my fifth grade class had a substitute teacher. Several classmates huddled together before the school day began and planned a surprise for the supply instructor. Word made its way to most of the kids prior to the ringing of the bell that signaled everyone was to be seated for announcements, and then the pledge began. At 10 o'clock, collectively, 25 pencils, my own included, dropped to the floor and a scrambling of chairs being pushed back to retrieve the writing instruments from where they had rolled disrupted the math lesson. Pretty funny, huh? Even funnier was that recess time was spent in our seats with the lights off. I sweated much of the afternoon, wondering what my dad would say if Mrs. Gibbs shared this juvenile escapade with him. Not always easy being the daughter of the school principal and having your mom as the substitute teacher for the day. This silly antic wasn't, of course, earth-shattering, but I surely wasn't acting as a beloved child. There are other tales I could tell on myself, mimicking the conduct of the in-crowd, allowing myself to be caught up in the moment. Maybe that's true for you too, and not all of them as a youthful offender. In keeping with the theme of school, Paul, in the reading from Ephesians today, educates us as he did the church in Ephesus. The goal of a Christian or Jesus follower's life is to imitate God. What are we doing when we imitate God? We're doing what we're designed to do, made in God's image, to do our best to exemplify his most perfect love. Of course, because we're human, mortal, we are not, cannot, dare not be him. Using Jesus' lifestyle and worldly presence as examples and receiving the gift and counsel of the Holy Spirit, our relationship with our Creator grows and deepens, enabling each of us, beloved children, to imitate the life-giving loving kindness shown to us. In chapter 5, verse 2, we're instructed to live in love. In some versions, the word walk is used rather than live. In any event, the idea is the same. It is a walk with our earthly companions, human and otherwise, not a sprint to the finish line. It's daily living, abiding in peace with all that was created. Occasional, when it's convenient, what's it going to hurt? Keep up with the Joneses. Fit in with the crowd. Status quo behavior isn't what the gospel is about. Take a moment to look at or think about what Paul shared in today's epistle. Does anything sound familiar? A hint relating to the Ten Commandments? It's not simply mimicking good, right, or proper behavior to gain points for admission to heaven or to be perceived by God and others as a righteous person. Might living 
walking in love require that the lover develop and practice empathy? We learn to walk. We aren't born on our feet. Empathy calls one to walk a mile in another's shoes. Following in Jesus' footsteps helps to bring about beloved community and requires perseverance and forgiveness. Many might recall the verses from Corinthians often read at weddings. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It isn't arrogant or rude, nor does it insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoings, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. These words aren't just a lesson or instruction for those being wed. They are a guide for right living on, living in this fragile earth, our island home. Remembering that we are in this world, but not of this world, is helpful. Proverbs 31 verses 8 and 9 tell us, Speak out for those who cannot speak, for the rights of all the destitute. Speak out, judge righteously, defend the rights of the poor and the needy. Could it be that to imitate God means that we have to die a little? You and I likely won't be called to literally sacrifice our lives for another, but we ought to remember those who are and those who have daily. We are going to have to deny ourselves and pick up our cross if we honestly want to follow Jesus. Use him as our moral compass. Never mind all the rambling and babbling about politics, red, blue, right, left, liberal, conservative, progressive. With God's help, as any of us has affirmed we will on many an occasion, and welcoming the indwelling guidance and prompting of the Holy Spirit, whether a gentle nudge or inner discomfort, you and I will have the courage, let go of the fear, be not afraid to walk the walk, not just talk the talk. It's oftentimes hard, sorrowful, tedious work, Yet the joy is immense, and the beauty soul deep. Let love your legacy be, writes Bishop Stephen Charleston, a power that keeps on repairing the world long after we're gone. The love you create will continue. It will answer prayer. We are not compelled, but given a choice, an invitation. What will be our response? speaking the truth in love, laboring honestly in accordance with our gifts for the common good, sharing words of encouragement, hope, forgiveness, helping to heal, repair, and restore a broken world. These are the fragrant offerings of love. I pray may they be my legacy. Amen. Please rise and join with me in affirming our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Be not not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. 
For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. He proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our presiding Bishop Michael, our Bishop Sean, our priest Randy, our deacon Martha, and our deanery prayer partner, St. Mark's, North Conawanda, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the town of New Fame, for every city and community, and for those who live in them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, or through outer space, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, especially Kathy Anderson, Jason Falk, Joe Bresga Sr., Rich Eggert, Scott Fensky, Peggy Heiss, Marsha Johnson, Pat Mathia, Margaret Moran, Eric Oswald, Pam Reed, Jessica Sherry, Armand, Charlie, Dean, Donna, Ellen, Jamie, Nick, Pam, Shirley, and any that you now name. And the people on your long-term prayer list, which we will read as the table is set, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are serving in the military, especially Garrett Adelizio, Vincent Adelizio, Matthew Chesty, James Clark, Joseph Depew, Hannah Federico, Lombardi, Ryan Hass, Ethan Knott, Ryan Lanahan, Peg Magritte, Jeremy Martin, Bryce Smith, and Mark Volt. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, especially Anne Fluel, Helen Heineman, William Putnam, Lorraine Steen, Jeff Straub, Carol Wright, and any you now name. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of St. Andrew and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord, our God. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do you well. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, 
We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry. We humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please rise for the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. Peace, everyone. Peace. 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 No, and now, uh, announcements, vestry is this Tuesday. We will meet in person and also via Zoom. It'll be a hybrid meeting, so if you want to join on Zoom, you'll still be able to, and it'll be at 7 o'clock. Um, who else has any announcements? Anyone? Are any of the birthday or anniversary people on Zoom? I don't think I see any of them here. I think Pam and Ruthie and anybody on Zoom with a birthday or anniversary. It is, as some folks have, have mentioned, it is um, Friday is the, the fifth anniversary of my ordination. So some folks who get the diocesan newsletter know that. So any others? Any other announcements? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. Before we begin the Eucharistic prayer, I'd like to bless this prayer shawl. If there are any cards, I don't know if there are any still in the pews. All things come from you, O Lord, and from your own gifts do we give to you. Prosper the work of our hands, prosper our handiwork. Show your servants your works and your splendor to their children. Almighty God, we thank you that you have put it into the hearts of your people to make offerings for your service and have been pleased to accept their gifts. Be with us now and bless us as we offer this prayer shawl to your praise and glory. 
through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. O oh God, your blessed Son worked with his hands in the carpenter shop at Nazareth. Be present, we pray, with the person who made this shawl. Give her work till her life ends, and life until her work is done, that laboring together with you, they may share the joy of your creation. Holy and compassionate God, we ask your blessing upon this shawl. Let it bring comfort to people who are lonely, healing to people whose hearts are broken, and security to people who are lost. May it be a sign of your loving presence to everyone who uses it. May this shawl be a safe haven, a sacred place of security and well-being. May the one who receives this shawl be craft, cradled in hope, kept in joy, graced with peace, and wrapped in love. Bless our work to your use, O Lord, and us to your service. Amen. We'll continue now with Eucharistic Prayer C. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let, let us give thanks to the Lord our God, who is right to give you thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxy suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created in heaven and heaven being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race, blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he reconciled us. By his wounds, we are healed. Therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn, made a new people by water and the spirit now bring before you these gifts sanctify them by your holy spirit to be the body and blood of jesus christ our lord on the night he was betrayed he took bread said the blessing broke the bread gave it to his friends and said take eat this is my body which is given for you do this for the remembrance of me after supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant to shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, 
Sarah, Rebecca, Leah, Rachel, Gilpa, and Zilpa, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only, not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers. Praise his Father through Jesus Christ, your great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. of Christ, the bread of heaven, body of Christ, the bread of heaven, body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ is the bread of heaven. The body of Christ is the bread of heaven. The body of Christ is the bread of heaven. The body of Christ is the bread of heaven. The body of Christ is the bread of heaven.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God the Creator, God the Redeemer, God the Sanctifier be with you this day and every day. Amen. You have been created in the likeness of God. Go in true righteousness and holiness to love and serve the Lord. Thank you. Thank you.